Hi, I'm Richard Simons from R Simons Limited, and this is my colleague Joe. And we've got quite an exciting day here because we've got the new 2021 Model 3, but not just the 2021 Model 3, we've got the 2020 version side by side to give you some real world direct comparisons. And I haven't seen one of these videos yet on the internet, and I've been a Model 3 owner myself for about 18 months now, so I know them pretty well. We've gone over the cars and found everything we could, I think. Exactly. And uh, we're going to show you what we spotted and go around both vehicles to show you all the differences. So, uh, do you see anything? The front. Well, let's crack on with the front, shall we? Because yep. I spotted a difference here straight away. Yep. Um, you seem to have. I've got carpet. Yeah, it's a bit, and... more, bit bigger, a bit more plush. Yeah, I've got nice little bag hooks here. These are pretty handy. Yeah, I quite like these. Yeah, what have you got on your one then? Well, the front is a little bit smaller, and we're guessing maybe that's to do with components like the heat pump. And it does look a little bit more basic. Still got the kidnap button though, so if you can fit someone in there, bad luck, they're gonna escape. Um, but otherwise, yeah, bit smaller, not as plush. Um, also, you pointed out yeah. something to do with headlamps. I got really excited about this. I'm yeah, you like the headlamp, don't you? <laughs> so we're gonna uh, have to do another test later on because the headlights are slightly different. So they look the same at first glance, but have a look in the corner detail here. And the new model is ever so slightly different. It has a kind of projector kind of lens uh, effect there. And I don't know what difference this is going to make at night. Does it corner? We've not heard about it cornering, but maybe it does. I was wondering if it was perhaps self-leveling. But there is still the adjustment in the service screen on the car for level adjustment yourself. So maybe they don't. Let's do another video later on where we show the difference at night. And it will be really interesting to see that. I think it could be a fundamental difference. The old headlights are pretty good. I have no, no complaints, they're good, aren't they? Yeah. But this would be quite interesting. So yeah, we'll see how that looks later on at night time. I think the thing that most people will be excited about aesthetically is the D-Chrome. No, I like the Chrome. Yeah, you like the Chrome. Well, I like the Chrome. We've, we've D-Chromed a lot of cars yeah. now to get this look. Maybe we're going to end up chroming Chrome cars. these things, yeah. There's a big debate. Yeah. Let us know in the comments below what you think is better, the chrome, chrome, chrome or Chrome? Yeah. It'd be interesting to know, maybe a vote poll, see what your opinions are on going for D Chrome and only a D Chrome. And then of course, I mean, I, I, I like the D Chrome. I think it looks good. And having it done from a manufacturer means you've got, you know, just that really clean look. And we have looked at this stuff, it is metal. It's not a wrap, it, it's, it's painted or anodized, not sure which, but nice finish. Um, yeah, I've noticed a little bit. Oh little, yeah. Little Tesla logo and indicator. So here, there's no indicator. Uh, no, there is an indicator. <laughs> there's no logo Tesla emblem on there. Whereas on the previous model, oh, it it's hard. there. So that's it's a shame nice they haven't put touch. that in. Really, it would have been quite nice. Yeah, nice touch. And then you've got this. We both spotted this. Everyone knows this straight away. Different uh, aero covers. Um, yeah, I'll show you a bit more detail around there. Yeah. The aero covers and how they fit. We did check the tyres. The tyres are all the same. Um, so these are Michelin Pilot Sport 4s, just the same as the previous cars had, if you have the 19, uh, sorry, the 18 inch wheel option like this does. Um, we'll check the 19 inch, and we've also got a performance on the way, and there's rumors about them maybe running different tire brands, so we'll have a look at those as we come. Um, one thing I will mention as we come down the side, the finish looks pretty good, doesn't it, Joe? Like, comparing this to how testers have been, we all know testers, fit and finish has been a little bit dubious, but we spotted, this is better, isn't it? This yeah. sort of alignment here is normally a bit of an issue. Normally a point to note when you're doing a vehicle inspection is to just look at the alignment here, um, make sure it is okay. On this car, as an example, it's really good. It looks really clean. In fact, all over, everything looks nice. It's good, the doors yeah. look well aligned. Yeah, I couldn't see any issues. No. I spotted one tiny, tiny little paint blemish. I don't think you'd ever even get it on camera. It's a little tiny kind of some dirt in the paint, the sort of thing we would flatten polish, but really it does seem good all really over. Good straight off the boat. They've allegedly been working on improving the quality. It will be interesting to see the Berlin built cars when they come about. Um, right, let's take it to the back. So this is a major talking point. Now we fitted power trunks to a lot of the 2019 yeah. Yeah. cars and 2020 cars. This now comes with the power trunk. So let's have a look at that. First thing I noticed is it's a lot quieter than the Model S and the Model X. Mm. in terms of its opening. It's very smooth. I mean, I don't know what you'd expect. You wouldn't expect to be juddering everywhere, but it's nice and it's nice and quiet. It's just got the um, sort of height memory because yeah. what was useful with the Model S, now, I mean, they're taller cars, but in the garage, this is quite easy to dent. And again, we've done a lot of dent repairs where this lifts up and it hits the ceiling or something mm. and dents. So let's just see if this uh, 
will actually memorize the height. It's just press and hold the button and it'll beep to confirm. And then if I close it. Yeah, it sounds promising. Yeah. And hopefully when I open it again, it will only raise to the point that I've asked it to. Yeah, yeah spot on. That could be a useful feature. It's probably something a lot of owners of Model S and X probably don't even realize, but this area here and all the cars does dent very easily and it's a very hard dent to fix as well. Yeah, it is. Um, the boot, I think, still the yeah, same. same sort of size. I mean, nothing uh, too drastic to notice in there. Uh, you get your, um, your UMC, of course, and Type 2 cable, mm -hmm. um, as you'd expect. Yeah, boot is a boot on this one. Nothing exists. I don't think anything's changed in shape or size, yeah. is it? It all looks the same. Okay, now these wheels, this was quite interesting. Uh, we wanted to take these aero covers off. So we've seen the aesthetic difference with the covers, but the uh, wheels behind it, we went to see if there was a difference in the actual wheels. And one thing that was difficult was it's just to get the covers off. Yeah. So on the new model, getting the aero covers off, uh, it took what, three or four of us yeah, to do. We, we were being careful, weren't we? We didn't want to damage it, it's our first go at it, but it took four guys, and you know what they say, how many guys it takes to change a light bulb, but <laughs> nevertheless, it took four guys to get it off. So when you're at quick fit, um, be careful, it's worth familiarising yourself with just how to get that off. It didn't um, feel right, we were, the old ones come off very easy, just pull them off. Yeah. Uh, this one we were levering one bit and the other side was popping in and it almost felt like this sort of centre cap was holding it, so mm -hmm. we had a check to see if that was retaining it in some way. It's not, it does just pop off, but you kind of need a lot of hands around it at one yeah. time and a bit of confidence and just be careful not to break it. But I can really see that um, you know, you, you're know at the roadside or you're at a tyre centre and um, yeah, I think people are going to go, there must be some other way to I get this see, off. Yeah, I can see you might snap it if you didn't know. Yeah, so, I, I you think know. you've got a bit of confidence, be, be a bit careful. Um, but yeah, they, they do just pop off at the end of the day, but much more difficult for some yeah. reason than yeah. the old one. I mean, maybe, I don't know, Rich, perhaps people were losing them on the road. Perhaps they've updated it, yeah, made maybe. it a bit firmer. Um, yeah. What about the wheel? Do you reckon that wheel's different? They look the same, but, yeah, yeah, but. There's a couple of little tiny details. So let's have a look at this edge here. Um, there's a slight difference here, and this, we think this is a sort of square side here. Um, some of this profile around the edge, I think has changed slightly. So let's come over to the uh, previous model here. So around the edge in, that profile here has got these kind of s smaller sections of, of uh, the segments, are larger, the segments are larger on the other wheel. And also these mm. edges are just a bit crisper on the other wheel, on the later Rounded wheel. here, I think. Yeah, the others are all, not diamond cut, are they? But they're just more machined, they look. Just they've got a square crisper, edge. Sharp. And I think this, this here is different. So there is a difference, uh, albeit very subtle. Uh, it must be for a reason, but small differences, small mm. differences. Uh, the glass has been a big talking point, hasn't it? Yeah, you like glass, yeah. So single glazing. <laughs> Have a look at this, single glazing. All this talk of double glazing or double pane glass, well, it only applies to the front windows. So you can see this basically has two segments of glass together. And I think this actually makes a difference to how the door sounds when it closes. It sounds a little bit more solid, probably because it's slightly heavier. And let's compare that to the previous one. A few differences there. So we're gonna run a noise test. We'll drive both these cars down the road and just measure how they compare uh, with ambient noise in the cabin. It will be interesting. I don't think it was a particularly noisy car, but it will be interesting if this really makes a difference uh, in the real world. And I think we better test the front and the back because maybe the back's the same, maybe the front's a bit quieter. Let's see. Let's show you some of the differences inside. But firstly, um, we're quite familiar with the previous Model 3. Uh, there's a few differences though. So let's take a look at how this switch gear here looks. This is a gloss black on the old model. Um, this switch here has changed slightly on the new one as we'll show you. And then we've got the familiar center console as we know it. So I've got the pop open panels here. The later cars had a, a wireless charging mat here. If not, the earlier cars can have it fitted. There's a couple of USB ports underneath there. Gloss black finish here. Again, we've wrapped this quite a lot for a lot of owners, um, but this has changed on new cars. So just have a look here. This has changed slightly. Not a lot, but some subtle differences. And the steering wheel buttons will have changed. So let's have a look at the new one now. Joe, have you got the, yeah, open the new one up and uh, what so have you new, got here? Well, the new car, they've really lifted the, all the touch points actually, and the kind of quality of finish it feels like. This center console completely redesigned, clad in, uh, 
the leather look material and then another Alcantara sort of suede for the induction charger for the phone. Um, this is now a gloss finish, so it's not going to collect the scratches. So we probably won't be wrapping these very much. This sort of metallic trim has also been echoed around the vehicle. Inside here, still loads of space. USB-C connectors, unusually. Same in the rear. Two in the front, two in the rear. And ample room, again, as you'd expect. And your little 12 volt charger in there. Are there any normal USB sockets? In no, there? it's only got, the, well, there's one. There's one normal USB, which is inside the glove box. And that is also has a complimentary 64 gig memory card for your uh, sentry mode and dash cam. So that's pretty cool. Otherwise, glove box is the same. Um, but uh, yeah, you've got that USB in there. So you could choose to use that for another device. It's a good idea to have it in there. It's gonna, it's, I guess it's more secure. Um, I guess if somebody was to break in the car, they can't as easily that's get right. the sentry. That's footage. it. It used to be down here. You could whip the thing out, no problem. But the glove box, a lot of people don't even know you need to use a screen to open the glove box. So by the time they've spent half an hour looking for the glove box button, you know, they'll probably give up, hopefully. It's a nice deterrent. I like the finish of the front of the console there, but I, if you had an older phone or you, you want a USB port, yeah, you must have an adapter, I guess. Yeah, I mean. I'm, I'm probably any time now, you know, Amazon will be full of aftermarket editions and bits of bobs. It's what happened to the previous model uh free so maybe for this one but at the moment you'll have to get by with the usb-c um, my daughter in the back with her ipad yeah i mean we're gonna have to make sure we got charging so i guess it is what it is um, yeah it's be nice that. to have the option for both yeah i think You've um got... but, you know what, what does everyone think does everyone prefer the new sensor console i think most people seem to have taken it on really well uh, again let us know in the comments below and give us your opinions if you prefer the glossy finish of the previous model or you think this is a much better finish for the new cars. And one last point, I was gonna just point out and I neglected to do so earlier, the badges are still in chrome. So we've de these for people into black, but they've left them in chrome. What do you think to have in the black window surrounds but the chrome badge? I, think I quite works? like a black badge. I think it ties in nicely, but this is always a bit of a personal tasting. I think no. it'd be too much. I think having the chrome there <laughs> is, is good. I mean, we've had both cars and we've obviously de a lot of these, but I think that works pretty well. I quite like it when you take the badge off completely, actually, Rich. Yep. Yeah, I've seen people put the other sort of tests of letters on the back. So, um, Or red, that's quite cool. But it's interesting. I think it would be great to drive this and compare the sound. Uh, this is still got eight miles on the clock. It's brand new. We picked it up with a trailer and brought it back to our warehouse here. Um, so we're going to do two things with this now. We're going to have a look at the, uh, the headlights and the dark. Okay. Oh, good service, Serge. <laughs> right. And um, we will also uh, measure that sound. I don't know if it'll make a difference to the noise inside the cabin. Yeah, yeah, it will be interesting to see. So I hope that's useful to everyone. Uh, we will update if we spot any more differences in the cars. Um, but that's it for now, I think, isn't it? And uh, yeah. we've got, I was at the Southampton docks this morning uh, where we collected this car. That's where all the cars come into the UK. And Tesla have now got a handover center there. Uh, and they've taken over one of the cruise terminals. It's, it's inside now. No cruises now. at the minute. So. No, no, no cruises at the moment. <laughs> so uh, they've got a big delivery center there. I think it's kind of cool going there. It's obviously very commercial, um, but it means you're getting the cars as they've come off the boat, eight, maybe nine miles on the clock uh, for the vehicles as they are then handed over. I think if you go and collect one from a local delivery center, just a little bit more scope for damage, isn't there? As you go on and off trucks and stuff. Yeah, but, that's it, yeah. um, I'm really pleased. I think the fit and finish has improved slightly. I think the changes are kind of nice. Um, I know there's some, some opinion about the chrome being better, the bag hooks in the front. Oh, that was a nice detail, but I don't know if I, I, I never we, used it. So. Well, when we went to the launch, when we went to Park Lane to see the first Model 3, yeah. I quite like that idea. I thought yeah. it was quite nifty and showed a little bit of sort of fresh thinking. I said, yeah. it's, it's not that original, I guess, but I liked it. Yeah. So have it not there, there will be some people who are like, oh, but uh, we live with them out. Yeah. Without for this one, didn't we? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'll be interested to see when we get the first one of these coming through, we have to chrome the windows around. Yeah. I'm sure we'll be able to do that. So that'll be coming through in the future, no doubt. I hope that's useful for now. Again, please like our uh, channel. We're going to be releasing a lot more videos as we uh, go through the following weeks of the stock and cars. I'm working really hard on the media. So please like, follow, subscribe, and comment below. And we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot.